<clears throat> See, I warned you all, don't start messing with Miss Ernestine. I, I warned y'all, but okay, come on. Let, let's tell the story of Ernestine. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for P Valley. This is season two, episode seven. After a week off, we are back. We are back. And the thing that I really ain't want to talk about, they jump right in. And that's the thing we're going to talk about, Miss Ernestine. We open right up with what I think is Patrick and Katori. Um, it just keeps getting better and better. The, the things that you're doing, the creative things you're doing. But this montage with Miss Ernestine singing, and um, she's singing Till You Come Back to Me, and we see Clifford as a, as a little boy running around the club. We see his mom, gorgeous. She was gorgeous. We see his mom, especially she had the white dress on. I said, oh, I knew what... I know what the, you know, all of the symbolism and all that was with her with the white dress and that, but just beautiful, just beautiful. But, um, and Ms. Ernestine singing Aretha and she's going through all the time and you just see how long, you know, you get in the history of the pink and all of what the pink was and what it was to his family and to Miss Ernestine, you know, she went through all them different hairstyles, all them different times. You've seen the 70s, you've seen the 60s, you've seen the 80s, baby, the 80s. I said, no, you ain't got that breakdown, do you? You ain't got the short haircut with the shag glued to the back, baby, and the freeze curl. No, come on now. I said, wow, okay. But that montage was excellent. It was excellent. Um, I really, really enjoyed that. And of course, you know, we love, absolutely love our dream girl. Anyway, even when she ain't Miss Ernestine, we love our dream girl, Miss uh, Loretta Devine, baby, and she was giving it to y'all. So I really enjoyed that, but again, made me very sad because it, it kind of leads us on to the fact that this is a part of the story I ain't really wanna do. But Jackson is the name of this episode. Really, really deep, a lot of good stuff, um, and we're going to talk about all of it. Anyway, let's move on. Uncle Clifford and Autumn have a conversation. They're down at the club. They were supposed to be meeting, and he's in there uh, reminiscing, you know, and looking around and carrying on, and Autumn comes in, and she's like, oh, I thought you had stood me up for the meeting. He's like, no, I ain't stand you up, and she's like, okay, I thought you had ghosted me. He said, no, nah, baby, there's more ghosts around here that you got to worry about than just me and my stuff. And I laughed. I said, you don't even know how true that is. You cracking, but you facking. You don't even know how true that is, honey, with the ghosts is floating around in there in the bank. Anyway, so um, he told her, you know, he said the thing he says, you know, she said, you're not going to talk me out of selling the club, Clifford. You're not. Y'all could take the money and move somewhere she's he said you ain't just bought a club girl you bought a piece of my family's history my ancestors and all of this and i'm saying okay so I, I definitely i get what he's saying i totally get what he's saying but again this is where the problem comes in clifford you want autumn to care as much about the land and the building and what you got going on as she cares about what she has going on. And I think the 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 uneven scale is that he don't really know what she has going on. She has her own thing going on. And in this conversation, I think Clifford got a little piece of it. Just a little piece of it. Just just hold on with me here. So um She's saying, you know, promised land that came to me, Clifford, and they offered me $5 million. So, you know, the numbers, it's out, you know, numbers don't lie. People lie. People lie. Sometimes your eyes 
and your ears lied to you, but numbers never lie. So when she said five million, he know where his cut of the five million and what he could really do potentially with that money. You know, he's like, oh, okay. She said, but I'm not selling that. I'm going to get what I want. I ain't moving until they offer me $10 million. That's what I want. I want $10 million, period. And she said, you know, um, I'm trying to get you what you deserve. I'm trying to get you what you deserve, um, Clifford. You and your answer, she said, I'm bitch. Don't try to blow no smoke up my ass, whore. You doing what you doing for you. And she said, you know what? For both of us, she said, you know, the thing is all the money that I lost, all the money that was lost in this club, all of everything and all the things I lost and my daughter, I'm not going to let her just, you know, die for nothing and all let her, her die for nothing or whatever. And Clifford, I, I didn't get this though. I was like, Clifford, that was kind of cold. When he told her, he said, Haley, baby, that baby gone. And I said, well, Clifford, that was kind of cold. That was, it was really cold actually, because you're sitting here arguing with her about the fact of your ancestors and all of your lineage and your memories in the club. And to say like, your baby's gone, like, the baby ain't shit or she don't love the baby as much as you love your 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 granddaddy and your mama and whoever else, you know, the memories that are attached to the building. So that was kind of cold. But there's that love-hate relationship there with Clifford and Autumn. And I think in a little piece of it, he meant to hurt her feelings. You know what I mean? With that little line. It was mean. It was cut, Kirk short, precise, and nasty. Trust me, I know about those kind of things coming out your mouth, honey. Do it to you in a minute. Anyway, um, and that was that. So, in this conversation, in this conversation, I feel as though, you know, they've had a lot of conversations, but never really anything other than anger. They just, they walk off and they mad at each other when the two of them come together. This time, I think Clifford got a little bit of a glimpse into some of her thought process and some of what she's going through. She definitely has a full-on picture of what Clifford is saying. So, I think things are going to change with him and Autumn. I don't see. I don't. I don't think they're going to keep being so at odds like this. And they're going to come together. And I'm just putting this out there, you guys. I'm talking to y'all now. I ain't talking about what's on the show. I'm going on my own. I'm going up on my soapbox. I got a feeling that we're going to need Uncle Clifford and Autumn to be closer. Actually, I think we're going to need all hands on deck to deal with the Montavia situation. I, I really, I got a feeling. I got a feeling. We're going to need all hands on deck because between Roulette, Whisper, and Montavious, and then something with Big Bone. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, some, I just, I feel a battle of good and evil about to ensue. And I, I, I feel like there's going to be a battle of souls where some souls don't know if they want to lean evil or lean good. And I think all that's going to be used in the fight. So that that's just what I'm seeing. That's that's where I'm at. Um, just remember that I said that, okay? Now we're going to go back to what we're doing. Down off my soapbox, boom, 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 bam, and I'm back. But y'all remember that I said that. I don't know why, but that is just leaning on me. I feel a bad or good and evil coming. But um, and you know, I'm always here for that. But I I, I feel it. And we need all hands on deck. Anyway, okay, so moving on. Now, this is something that I love. Okay, so we gotta we gotta talk about Miss Ernestine. Miss Ernestine got COVID. Flat out. And she got it bad. You know, she's already hallucinating, she's sweating. She's uh she's having real bad trouble breathing and, and all of this. But when I look over there and then we got little Murr, he in the other room, he's going through. 
You know, I mean, come on. He watched Teak blow his brains out. You know, and Teak's not just his friend. That was his ex-lover. And I believe Teak was actually probably his first love. And, um, yeah. So he ain't really got things on, back on with Cliff. He's just there at the house because he ain't, you know, nowhere else to go, you know, for comfort. So he's in there. And then this is what I was living for. So Cliff's out in the streets doing the business. And Lil Murder is right there taking care of Miss Ernestine. Baby, no questions asked. No questions asked. She got the cough carried on. He came right up out of that trans. He was in and crying. Went right on in there, took care of Miss Ernestine. I know y'all was watching. I know y'all saw what I saw. What was he taking care of Miss Ernestine like? His mother-in-law or his grandmother took her on just like family no questions asked and you know at the point where they are in the time and period in the story you know we all scared as hell about COVID and being around other people with COVID you didn't know if were you going to get it you don't know you didn't know nothing and everybody was scared but when it comes to your family your actual family listen fuck we'll go down we'll all go to burn this bitch down together that's just the way it is and he was in there taking care of Miss Ernestine, and baby, it hit me right in the. I said, "Oh, child, Cliff, come on back here and get your man, honey." But yeah, so uh, he had made the little food. You know, he cooks down, so he had made the food, and she said, "Cliff are trying to kill me with that chicken and dressing he made." <laughs> He's like, "No, he got to get some food in you." And the food did look good. He had hooked her up, Patty. She had everything. She's smelling. You know, of course, she does she blind, so you know her sense is heightened. But she's smelling and she said, oh, yeah, honey. And he was sitting over there feeding her and stuff. And so she going to say, okay, chef boy Negro. No, what's she called? Chef Negro. Chef boy Negro D. I said, oh, Lord. Miss Ernestine is a hot mess. But they laughed and they, you know, they had a little conversation. And he going to say, you know, you give me a little hand with, with Cliff. You know, I, I had a mess up, whatever. And then she said to him, she said, yeah. She said, I smell something. He said, um, I got a peach cobbler in the oven. She said, no, that ain't what I'm talking about. I smell death. And I smelled it all on you. She said, when well, you came here that night, all that blood smelled it. But you, I said, mm, sir, this thing. And then all this cryptic talk. She's like in the middle. And I'm like, oh! I just got this sense that she's like in the middle. Like she's, she's in the middle. It's not just her, her senses are just heightened for just that reason. She's in the middle. It's like the beginning of a transition. And I, I that I'm feeling, uh, anyway, moving on. Let's go. We're at this store. Down there to Family Dollar. That's all they went to the dollar store. Child at the Family Dollar. Old Keyshawn with her boyfriend, stupid, and the kids. And she sees Autumn. So she tells him she got to go get some more makeup or whatever. And she said, I'll meet you up front. So she goes on over. She talks to Autumn. And Autumn told her, she said, oh. So I guess uh, you haven't used my gun yet. I said, oh, okay. And she's like, you know, I just, I don't know, I just can't. And I got these kids. And, you know, Keyshawn always got an excuse. She always got an excuse while you walk around looking like shit, all beat up and shit. But you always got an excuse. You are so wrapped up in it. And it's so hard to watch. Um, So hard to watch. And Autumn told her, she said, there's other ways to get out. And she just went on off. And can I say, listen, let me tell you something. How goddamn clean do Autumn be walking around the town? I said, girl, I know you be hating on her. She be clean as hell. She's clean. She's a different, you know, she she come from a different world. She come from a different world. And she told us some more about that later on. But yeah, I, I was like, I was here for her. I was like, go ahead, Autumn. But she went on off. And I said, Autumn's taking on like the role like a female diamond at this point i was like wow did y'all notice that she's literally become like the female diamond to Keyshawn. 
I said, child, she needed, she needs somebody. She needs somebody, even if it's a screwball, like Autumn. And is Autumn really a screwball or is Autumn really just a badass chick? Okay, she do what she got to do to get where she where she need to be and, and get what she want. My, my version of a badass chick. Anyway, moving on. Um, she a little sideways. You know, she a little sideways, but it is what it is. It's a dog eat dog world, honey. Mercedes and old Terrica. Well, you know we got Terrica running around here pregnant. So Mercedes has basically opened up the door to abortion. And they're heading down to Jackson. And she's saying, wait a minute, I thought we were going somewhere else. In this car, I didn't know we was going to Jackson. She said, the only thing people go to Jackson for is to get abortion. That's what people go to Jackson for. I'm not going to Jackson. Then they had to pull the car over so she could throw up and all this got to carry it on. A mess. She told her, no, we're going down to Jackson. I ain't saying we're getting an abortion. I'm just saying we're going to have a consultation. We're going to see what they say and see where we are. We don't even know how far along you are, which tells you you ain't got no business being pregnant because you don't even know what you're doing, you know? And they went through all of that. It was, you know, I'm not going to go through every individual little piece. But the, the, the crux of it was that in this car ride, it was a deep, deep car ride. Because through the car ride, Mercedes seeing the Patrice in her. She saw the faults in the way Patrice mothered her. She saw the bits and pieces where... She was trying to correct the Patrice and her and, and some things that Patrice did just kind of made sense. And it, it was, it's a whole inner power struggle. You know that one they call parenting? Yeah. And Terrica there acting like an idiot the whole time and questioning her parenting. And just Terrica, Terrica irritates me because she just doesn't want it. She hears everything that Mercedes is saying to her, but she just don't want to get it. She don't want to get it. She wants to be angry. She wants to be angry. You left me. You know, that's a displaced child. That's what they give. You could tell them. You could lay it out. You could write it. You could put it in crayon. Until they get ready to let it go, you ain't going to frustrate yourself. They, they just, they be in it. And then they, when this, they ready to come out of it, if they come out of it, it's really in their own time. And you ain't doing but aggravating yourself. But through this, uh, even the whole situation with the boy, everything the same, 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 same. Anyway, we have this flashback. Um, she takes Terrica. They stop at this restaurant. Terrica's running to go to the bathroom on the way down to Jackson. Goes into the... Uh, restaurant she sees a girl and her mother sitting at a booth and it takes her to flashback we go back baby and it's her and patrice now this was really crazy this scene because i was like wait a minute hold up hold up hold up so she said uh i'm short she's like where are we staying at tonight mom she said oh we're gonna crash and so and so 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 they basically ain't even got no place to stay just a damn mess and she's like, um, she over there winking and grinning at this man, Patrice is. But the man really looking at Mercedes. He looking at Mercedes. She says to her, um, how about you uh, do your thing, you know, you do your thing. I said, wait a minute, whore. I know good and goddamn well. But see, this is that, that is what we've come to know is classic Patrice Woodbine. You talking out of both sides of your goddamn mouth. Why don't you go ahead and do your thing? And then what happened next made me want to wring Patrice's neck. After that, she says, no, mom, mm -mm, I got us. She go in her little purse, pull out her little wallet. She said, what is that? She said, money. Where'd you get that money from? The little boyfriend, Terrica's daddy. Or, no, I don't even think it was Terrica's daddy. No, yeah, Terrica's daddy. Terrica's daddy. She said she uh, got the, uh... no, I'm lying. I think it's Terrica's dad. Yeah, yeah, Cortez. 
or what? Yeah, Cortez. She um, she says uh, I got it from him, and um, whatever. And she took and got the beating her. She literally beat her down, and was like, "No, you ain't uh uh, beat her down, beat her down." And I'm like. I'm confused. Like, you're beating her down. So what was she supposed to tease the man? She wasn't supposed to go through a hook with the man. She supposed to lead the man on. So you really started all of this. The whole, the whole with the career of exotic dancing is you the one that pumped that into her. Go tease and entice and get the, pull the money out of the brother, but don't give him nothing. You literally embedded that seed in her and then when you thought she actually gonna give herself to a boy that actually could want her you beat her ass make it make sense patrice but you can't you can't because that's that preacher shit you got going on too how you stand up there and you know you doing the work of the devil but you laying behind the bible same old double talking ass bullshit you beat her down constantly about her being a stripper and all of this stuff. And here we're seeing you literally planted the seed. You taught her. You taught her. The value of enticing a man to get things out of, out of him that you want without giving him what it is that you actually offered. You taught it. You taught it. You treated, you raised her like you were a goddamn madam. And then when it looked like you weren't in control of, then you beat her ass. You double talking raggedy ass whore. Just ridiculous. Absolutely, I was so, I was so confused at one point. And then I was like, oh no, I see what this is. Mad as hell. I so, said, oh, I could just bang her in the top of her head. Ridiculous. Oh, that Patrice Woodbound and stuff. When I tell you Patrice Woodbound is going to blow hell up, she going to blow it up. Because she, her, listen, gasoline draws and her boots are full of kerosene. When Patrice Woodbound get to hell, she is just going to just go up in a blaze of glory. Boom! When she get there. Because she is a hot ass mess. She's a hot ass mess and she played too many games. She really is a demon. She really is. And she be sharp, but she's a demon. That half was a day, my honey. Anyway, all of that was a mess. So then, pull it in. We go back into regular, real time. She, you know, her and Tarek are going back and forth. She telling her about the little boy. Now she would have texted a little boy. He 14. She's telling her girl, he's 14. He, he talking about, oh no, he's going to take care of me. He'll take care of the baby. This, that thing. He wants to keep the baby. Blah, 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 blah. Because she didn't even know if he even knew. Oh yeah, he wants to keep the baby. She's like, really? 14? What, what, what? 14? You and him? Really? And then she had a nerve to say something to her and told her, oh, what's the bad? You just jealous. Because he wanted me where the person that got you pregnant didn't want you. Maybe she turned around to her and gave her. I said, oh, girl, she got you, honey. She told her, she said, I, when I have my baby, I ain't never going to slap my baby. She said, yeah, I said the same thing, too. Terrica's a bit much, and her mouth is a bit fresh. She gave her just what she deserved, honey. She wrapped her right in the mouth. You don't even understand, nor do you know the sacrifices I've made for you over the years, girlfriend. Crash your ass, honey. She cracked her good, honey. Anyway, but again, Terrica's still in that angry place where she just don't want to hear what Mercedes is saying, you know, and all of that old foolishness. And of course, you know, she calls her Sadie's like she's one of her friends, which is the first mistake. That all of that, that's all that shit there. That's all a mess. And that's all Shell's doing. Because she's still, the fact that she's still, she she's still her mother. She should not be calling her Mercedes. That's just, that's what Shell's doing. You know, everything, all that little stuff, that was all to get at Mercedes, you know? It worked. But then look at where you at. 
Look at where you at. Anyway, let me go back over to Uncle Clifford's house. I ain't got enough for Terrica and Mercedes for now. Go on over to Uncle Clifford's house. So, Uncle Clifford and Little Murder. They were having a little chat. You know, nothing too, too heavy. Um, told him, let me get you some more clothes. Is or look like because you know his top was off, like he wasn't gonna leave, he wasn't, he just wasn't doing good. And, and Clifford knows, he says, Let me get you a change of clothes, being as though I know you're gonna be here while he goes upstairs. He says, Okay, and um, he said, I didn't know you're gonna be staying another day. That's what he said, child. He didn't just about move that, but it's just y'all just watch anyway. But he went on up there to get these clothes, and of course, you know, Clifford's a lot bigger than his little murder. Um, so he's like, he ended up coming upstairs. He, she said, ah, who the hell told you to come over here? Come over by my boudoir. And, and he's going to say, yeah, whatever. And so he's going through, he's looking at the clothes and some of this stuff. He's like, oh my gosh, looking at some of these different clothes. I said, you used to be stunting on these folks. He looked at this one little outfit. She said, that belongs to an old piece of trade, Annie. He was like, oh, threw that down. <laughs> he threw that down. He didn't appreciate that shit. They never do. Anyway, he says, so you always been like this? Because he's picking up like these little sheer pieces and he had his first little purse and all that. He said, yeah, my mama bought that for me. That was my first, that was a Gucci bag. It's like, yeah, my mama bought that for me. And if anybody said anything about it, and she beat they ass. He said, uh, he said, yeah. He said, um, yes, I've always been me. I'm Uncle Clifford. What are you? And he looked and he's like, no, he, you know, he, he, he knew he kind of offended him, but he's like, he didn't mean to offend him. He said, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm asking the questions because I don't know. And he said, I'm what the world won't let me be. I'm what the world won't let me be. So, yeah, he said, yeah, well, because you could turn yours off. You can turn yours on and off. And don't nobody got to know about yours, but I can't turn mine off. I'm always on Clifford. Period. So, that was like a little bonding moment, and it was a teaching moment for Little Murder. And he's saying, you know, child, you know, she knows she got him, honey. Oh, Clifford knows she got him. Anyway, so that right when they're in the midst of all of this, carry it on. <clears throat> you hear this moving and 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 doors banging. I said, what the hell was that? Child, out the front door, Miss Ernestine done dashed. She done left. Told you she'd be in and out, child. She hallucinating. She done went all the way down to the, like, the, the riverbank. And they're like, no, Miss Ernestine, like, don't get it, you know, because you can't swim in that, child. So they ran, they ran down to get her, and She's saying, um, it's time. It's time, baby. Let me go. You got to let me go. And Clifford said, you can't go swimming in the Mississippi, girl. And she's like, mm -mm, if you won't let me go to the water, then bring the water to me. Because she was saying, I'm I'm coming. I'm coming. Um, I'm coming to see you, Beulah. And, Cliff, and uh, Clifford looked and his face just kind of went blank. And Lil Murder said, well, who's Beulah? She said, that's my mama. And she said, it's time. No, it's time. He's like, no, 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 no. And he's looking, he said, um, her fingers actually were turning blue. Her fingers were turning blue. But when she was talking about the water, the murder went over and leaned into the water. He had taken her bonnet. And she was taking her bonnet and stuff off her shoes and stuff off. They were picking them up. You know, when they was following to find her, it was like breadcrumbs. But um, he put the water in her bonnet and then he came back and he poured the water on her. Like poured the water, he like squeezed the water on her and it really calmed her. Cause she was getting, you know, excited. It it calmed her. Little murder, little murder child. Gotta love him, honey. But yeah, they got her up and they got her back to the house. You know, she her breathing was bad. That's why her fingertips was turned blue. Get her back to the house. And then they um they ended up, you know, by this time, it's like dark by this time. The ambulance had come. They had gotten her in the ambulance. And, you know, at that time, you can't go with them. When, you know, when we were in that part of the pandemic, you can't go to the hospital. 
So our people were going there by themselves. And she said, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to die and go. And, and, and I don't want to go there because they ain't going to, I ain't never going to come back. I'm not never going to come back. And I think, yeah. I ain't feeling it, y'all. I ain't feeling it because I, I feel, I feel at this point like we've just seen Miss Ernestine's last scene other than a flashback. So I wasn't ready to let go of Miss Ernestine. And I'm sitting there and that whole scene just broke my heart. Stand him, her, he telling Cliff, you got to say bye. He's like, no, you they're going to get you right. They're going to get you right. And he's telling Clifford, um, you got to say bye, Clifford. You got to say bye. But I'm like, you don't even realize you, yeah, you really got to say, I don't believe Miss Ernestine coming back, child. I really don't. I don't think she's coming back. But even the whole holding hand and, he has his he has her ring and all of that. I, I, anyway, I'm moving on. Y'all get it? Y'all got it? I ain't got no more for it. I'm gone. I'm moving on. Um. Yeah, I ain't got no more for that. Moving on. Mercedes and Tarek. I'm going back to them in their bullshit. Okay. So they're in the hotel room. They get into it again. Tarek locks herself in the bathroom. Um. Cause she's saying you she said time's up because they went when they went down later told her, you know she right there she got to make a decision <clears throat> she had 24 hours she can either come back but um you know she can come back and get the abortion or you having the baby because she's just too far too far out it's like 14 almost 15 weeks and um she's like okay so she said that's it terica you got to make a decision what are you doing what are you doing here she said and that's the thing i i didn't want to be like Patrice. See, Patrice made me have you. She made me. I didn't have an option. All I'm doing is trying to parent the best way I know how. I'm giving you options. And that's it. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to, it's going to be whatever it's going to be, but it's going to be your decision to make, not mine. I didn't have a decision. And she said, did you want to abort me? She said, oh, I would be lying to you if I told you I didn't, even, I didn't think about it. I thought about it, but I didn't have the option. My mother made me have you. Like a punishment. So she was like, okay. So she told her, she said, um, all right. So we see them, you know, she ends up coming out of the bathroom eventually, you know, because they're talking through the door. She comes out of the bathroom and she sits down and she's like, I'm really trying. I'm trying to fix it. I'm real. She said, you just don't know. You don't know. You know, she's still stuck on that. You didn't come back for me and this, that, and the other. And she said, the gem was supposed to be it. It was going to be the thing that really proved to you that I'm really a mother. And she told her, I never cared about that. Like, I never wanted you to prove anything to me. All I wanted you to do was be my mother. So, again, that was an aha moment for both. For both. You were trying to do these grand gestures and all she wanted to do was spend time with you, which I understand. And then again, you know, she's like, you didn't come to this. You didn't come to that. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. And it was really all things where she was working and doing these things, trying to make this grand gesture that you were worthy when you were always worthy because you gave birth to her. So you were always worthy. Shell don't have no control over that. Anyway, so they get it. She get it. Finally, after all this time, Terrica got it. She got it. She came and she sat down on the bed with her. She says, listen, now when we go back, what you want to do with your room, with the room? She says, what do you mean? For the baby? She said, the baby, you, whatever. The room. What you want to do with it? You want to paint it or something? What you want to paint it green? And she looked at her and she sat down on the bed so she know now you ain't going back to Shell's. Now, damn was Shell saying, I'll beat Shell's ass. We ain't going through that. You're not going back over there. And that's final. What you want to do with the ring? You want to pay green? She said, how do you know green? And she said, because I'm your mama. And I said, okay, come on now. You know it was the waterworks over here. But <laughs> I was like, all right, put a nice little bow on it. Pretty much, pretty much. 
So we, I figured, okay, so she's having this baby. But, you know, whatever. Mercedes is going to do what she needs to do. She didn't lost the money from her $10,000 hookup. But um, she'll figure it out. So the next morning, we actually end up seeing them leaving the hotel, the little motel that they were staying in. And she gives Terika the keys. She's like, okay, here, I'm going to let you drive. And she said, I'm going to let you drive and you do whatever it is you want to do. We're getting in the car. We can go on to, Tuckale to Chuckalisa or we can go to um, Jackson. It's up to you. So they got in the car and they just riding, 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 riding. And Terrica's thinking about everything and this, that, and the other. And then, baby, when they got when they seen the sign to go to Jackson, Miss Terrica hit that dag on uh, right turn signal, baby, and pulled on off and went on over to Jackson. So she went on the side to get rid of that baby and go on home with her mama. I said, "Whoa, okay, um, that's a whole lot. That's a whole nother piece." Um, also, there was a whole portion in here where we it showed the the child in her where. She talked about uh, this person and that person, that person, that person. They said, if you get an abortion, you get cancer. And and then she asked Mercedes. Mercedes was like, that is not true. Then she asked the doctor, you know, the nurse at the, the abortion clinic. She's like, no, baby, that ain't true. I said, Lord have mercy. But that just shows, you know, your kids don't listen to you most times. Most times your kids, were, they literally believe people in the street before they believe you. And you could be, don't even have no issues as a parent. They, but they just have a tendency to believe people in the street before they believe you. Weird. Anyway, so she went on and had the abortion. And then we see them sitting on the couch. And then a commercial for Patrice comes on for her running for mayor. And you can see like, Terrica's like, you know, she like, she ain't got no power over us at all. At all. We just related to her. That's all. Just related to her. We respect her. That's it. She ain't got shit to do with what's going on here. And Terrica says to Mercedes, but, um, oh, almost forgot. There's one line that she said, you know, she was talking about Patrice. What she said about Patrice. She said, you know, um, when she made her, when she said she made me have you, she said, you know what? Sometimes the devil gives you your best blessing. I said, oh, ain't that a mouthful? Wasn't that a mouthful? Anyway, okay, we'll be right back. They on the couch. Patrice on there, she said what she had to say. And then uh, Terrica asked her, she said, do you think I'm going to burn in hell? Because you know, of course you know that's what Patrice preaches, honey. All fire and brimstone, honey. She told her, you know what? If so, I'm going to be right there beside you. So it doesn't matter. And I was like, all right. And then they hugged. And I'm like, okay, so glad. They are finally good for now. They're good for now. Until we get to, there's going to be some battles. But it's just, you know, the whole thing with her and Shell and her and Patrice, but all that's going to do is push them two closer together, hopefully. Anyway, okay, so let's let's leave there. Let's go on over here to this now. Here, oh, baby, I said, what are we doing now? So we see Uncle Clifford. He got his wig off, and he's um, the most out of his extreme femininity as you'll ever see him, okay? So he's taking a shower. And he's crying, you know, crying over the whole, you know, mama gone, honey. So he's crying and all that. So he, he gets out of the shower and he comes back. He come back. Little Murder got on some ridiculous contraption, baby. He got on a pair. And it's all, Clifford's close. It's all too big. It looked crazy. He got <laughs> feathers and just all this drag bullshit on and got a thong over top of a pair of latex pants. I'm like, where are you going? And he's dancing to Cisco. Let me see that thong. And I'm like, oh, let me see your booty go put up, put up. And I'm laughing. And child, Clever like, take that mess off. <laughs> and 
He said like he had the little prince gloves. What are you going to say? <laughs> Is this how you do it? So it was really lighthearted and it was really funny. Very cute. Um, it was really, it, it, it lightened the mood. He knew what he was doing. And um, he take it off. They're going to say, shoot, going to try to tell me. I don't know nothing about no Cisco. Yeah, I do. So they lay on the bed and they're, they're, they're talking, you know. And then, child, the next thing you know, you know what happened, honey. It goes down. Manny. It go down. It go down. It went down, down. And I was like, okay, so here we go. So they've meshed together. But in this scene, I think it's shock. I think I'm sure all of you are shocked and couldn't wait for me to get to this part because now y'all want to know what the hell just happened here. Well, what just happened here is that little murder turned over and gave himself to. Clifford and he let Uncle Clifford top him and I said oh okay all right I ain't even got nothing else to say because I ain't explaining all that to y'all I ain't going to <laughs> say that with y'all but it was yeah it was interesting to see. It's funny to see how much bigger than um, Little Murder Uncle Clifford is when you see them in that. I'm like, wow, yeah, he really is a lot bigger than Little Murder. He's a lot bigger than him. But anyway, so child, he went on and uh, ran on up in Little Murder. I said, okay, all right, girl. Uh, yeah. Nails and all. I said, oh my. <laughs> I said, the public, they, they ain't ready. They ain't ready for that type of teaching. <laughs> Baby, y'all ain't ready for that type of teaching. Honey. He took him straight to the dark arts, honey. Woo, took him to the dungeon, baby. Anyway, so that was that. It was a whole different look on Little Murder. Now, I'm interested to see in my comments that y'all go on and type it. And don't, I mean, be respectful. But type y'all shit in the comments. I want to see in the comments how y'all feel about Lil' Murder at this point. And I really want to know, like, for real. I want to know. I want you to be honest. And I want you to be open down there in them comments when you're talking to me. I want to know what your feelings are about this scene and what questions do you have. And then maybe I'll do another, ain't no maybe. I'm telling y'all, I'm going to do another video and I'll address those questions. That's how we'll handle that. So y'all get on down in the comments and tell me what you got. And then I'll do another video in a couple days. And we'll, maybe I'll go live and we'll get down with the get down and talk about what y'all had to say about this. Because I know y'all are buzzing like this. Baby, welcome to the dark arts, honey. Anyway, so um, that was that whole thing. They wake up the next, you know, because this is the first time they actually got to really sleep together, sleep together, like peaceful sleep together, ain't hiding, ain't, you know, they just laid up. And they wake up, they both hurt. They both hurt. They both, you know, Uncle Clifford feel like he get ready to lose his grandma. He done lost Big Teak. Um, that's an unsaid thing. You know, he don't really know exactly who Big Teak is, honey. Who is she and what is you, you had it, baby. When that all come out, anyway. But um, he went to try to say something about Big Teak, and he got to cry. He told him, mm -mm, "Not until you're ready." So that was that. So we're just gonna leave that there for now. Then we move over across town, and we hear a knock at the door. I said, "Well, who is that?" I said, "This bitch, baby. Look up, Derek. Say, Keyshawn." Who was that at the door? She said, I don't know. Baby, you went and opened that door, baby. It was autumn. I said, what I tell y'all? I could be your bad bitch. Went up there and knocked on the door. She brought it right on to him. Bam, 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 bam. I got a gift for the baby and I came to see Keyshawn and the kids. Came on in there, baby. She said, can I hold the baby? She's like, yeah. And I was like, ooh, she want to hold the baby. Okay, cool. She held the baby. Because she ain't seen the baby in quite a while. Remember she held the baby that one time when um, when she was first born? She held her. 
and she said, let me tell you a little story. And she sat, she basically told Keyshawn her story. The story of Haley, the real Haley. And that's what she told her, she said, yeah. Fine jewelry, fine clothing, a McMansion. Well, she said McMansion, you know I about fell out, honey. And some of my YouTube people that follow me know exactly why that made me fall out, honey. But a <laughs> McMansion. And this, that, and the other, and told her, said, yeah, but um, getting banged on and beat up and all this other stuff and carrying on and said, you know what? Then there's time to make a plan. It's time to make a plan. But in the midst of making the plan, all her tears had made a river. Montavious couldn't swim. But she could swim. But the baby perished in the midst of all of it. She said, because she took too long to leave. And the baby drowned in her mother's tears. I said, bitch, if you don't work a metaphor, you... I said, y'all, baby, I was sitting here so worked with Autumn and that story that it just, and she told her, open your bag. She gave her the bag with the gift. There was a cell phone in there. She said, when you're ready, when you're ready, you search and look up Haley Colton and give me a call when you're ready to swell. I said, listen, listen, baby, listen. Why am I so in love with Autumn at this point? You know, I ain't never had no real disdain for Autumn. I just be like, girl, you be getting on my nerves. You be doing too much. You a little self-centered. But baby, I am living for a bad bitch, Miss Autumn. Here, call me when you ready to swim. And on that, I'm out of here. Y'all, like I said, hit me in the comments. And um, I got a live that I'm going to give y'all over y'all comments and we'll do that all right and for this this is it this is jackson season two episode seven ain't got that no more ain't got no more ain't got no more i'm talking for 47 minutes I ain't got no more i'm gone for now and i'll catch y'all next week but i'll see y'all midweek and we're gonna talk about that little murder and uh uncle clifford little situation that dark arts we're gonna talk about the dark arts baby later y'all